to, to kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of your more recent research. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the 13-hour fast overnight and how that was uh, very robustly associated with a 40% reduction in breast cancer recurrence and non-statistically significant reduction in breast cancer mortality. But um, you also have looked at some of the biomarkers that are known right. to increase uh, breast cancer risk. And, and it also, there was a, a, an effect on some of those biomarkers like inflammation as well, correct? Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've actually seen probably our most consistent effect on um, something called hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of um, your average glucose over about three months. So interestingly enough, we saw the association um, both in a general sample of women from what's called the NHANES survey, so a nationally representative survey of women, uh, we saw that women who uh, fasted longer had lower hemoglobin A1C. And then in our own sample of breast cancer survivors, we found the exact same association, which, mean, you know, which us, to us means this is probably strong. So that's one of the reasons we think it might uh, influence, uh, have a huge effect on reducing the risk of diabetes. Um, as far as inflammation, interestingly enough, we only found that it reduced inflammation among women who uh, didn't eat a lot of food late at night. In other words, you know, if, uh, if your fasting interval was 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., it, it didn't seem to matter. But if your fasting interval was early in the day, like 6 to 6, then it seemed like the fasting interval reduced CRP. So it go, uh, C reactive protein, this measure of generalized inflammation. So that's what made us think it, it's not just the 12 hours, it's the 12 hours only if they start fairly early in the evening. That's when the positive effects happen. Very interesting.